Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of anal fissures. So what are anal fissures? Anal fissures are going to be superficial tears of anal skin. And these tears are going to occur distal to what we call the dentate line. So the dentate line is going to be here in this image. So you might be wondering what distal means. Distal means something that's farther away from the core of the body. You can think of it like that. In this case, it's going to be below the dentate line. So it's going to be farther away from the internal organs. You can think of it like that. It's closer to the anal outlet. And the dentate line is where the endoderm meets the ectoderm. So you don't have to worry about those terms here. You can think of it as the internal gastrointestinal system meeting the external skin or external dermatological environment. So it's going to be where those two tissues meet. That's the dentate line or otherwise known as the pectinate line. And again, these anal fissures are going to occur below that line. Now, there are multiple risk factors and potential causes for anal fissures. Some of the most important are going to be constipation. So long-term or severe constipation, especially associated with this, where you can see low fiber diets. Chronic diarrhea can also increase the risk for anal fissures. If it's an irritant diarrheal stool that can cause tears in the anal skin. Injury can also be another cause. We can see this occurring from sexually transmitted infections and inflammatory bowel disease, among other causes. Now, anal fissures can occur at any age, but what we will notice is that they're most often going to occur in pediatric populations. So in very young kids, toddlers, if those little toddlers experience too much constipation, they can cause issues and damage tears to the anal skin. And we can also see it in middle-aged patients. And this is going to be a relatively common condition. Hundreds of thousands of new cases occur each year in the United States alone. So before we talk about the signs and symptoms, we have to talk about two different types of anal fissures. One is known as acute anal fissures, and the other one is chronic. The difference between these two is going to be for how long patients have had the fissure and how long they've had symptoms. So with regards to acute anal fissures, the signs and symptoms are going to occur for less than six weeks. And with chronic anal fissures, the signs and symptoms are going to occur for more than six weeks. The reason we distinguish these two is because we can see different signs and symptoms occurring in chronic anal fissures than acute, and we'll see those differences later on. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of anal fissures. The first one is going to be anal pain. And this anal pain is going to be worse during defecation. That's going to be very key with regards to the pain from anal fissures. The pain is going to be worse during defecation. The pain is often going to be described as severe, so severe intensity pain. The pain can last for minutes to hours after defecation. So patients may not have pain or they may have a little bit. During defecation, they can have worsening very severe pain, and then afterwards, minutes to hours later after defecation, they can still have intense pain. And the anal pain will recur with every bowel movement. We can also see bleeding occurring with anal fissures. So you can imagine if there's a tear in the skin, that's going to cause bleeding. The bleeding is going to be a bright red blood, and it's going to be minimal. It'll be noticed on toilet paper most commonly. So it'll be normally at the end of defecation. And a lot of times you may see it a little bit in the toilet, but most of the time you won't. You'll mostly see it on the toilet paper after defecation. And there may not be any bleeding in chronic anal fissures. So that's also important to point out here. If you've had chronic anal fissures, you may not see bleeding at all. You may only have pain that occurs every time you have a bowel movement. Now, another important symptom that occurs with anal fissures, but it's not due to anal fissures, is constipation. We talked about this as going to be a very, very important cause of anal fissures, but it's also going to be very common in patients with anal fissures. And the reason that it's common is because due to that very severe anal pain we talked about in the last slide, patients can become afraid to have bowel movements and avoid having bowel movements at all. This can eventually lead to worsening constipation. And when they do have a bowel movement, that can lead to tearing and cause more issues with the anal fissure. So constipation is going to be very, very important. It's going to either be a cause of anal fissures or it can end up occurring due to the fact that patients are afraid to have a bowel movement because they don't want to experience that severe pain. So constipation is going to be a decreased frequency of bowel movements and or increased consistency of stool. So if we look at the bristle stool chart, type 4 stool is going to be the normal stool and type 1, 2, and 3 will be considered constipation. Now, the next clinical findings are going to be things we see in chronic anal fissures. These include perianal skin tags. So perianal skin tags in anal fissures are known as sentinel skin tags. They're going to be painless. Again, they occur in chronic anal fissures, and they occur in a particular place, and they're going to occur distal to the fissure. 
So we mentioned before, distal is going to be farther away from the body core, or in this case, below the anal fissure. So it's going to occur directly below the anal fissure. And perianal skin tags will not only occur in chronic anal fissures, but they can occur in other conditions like hemorrhoids and Crohn's disease as well. And we can also see something called hypertrophied anal papillae. So this is where the anal papillae will become hypertrophied. So the papillae are going to be at the dentate line and they become hypertrophy. They become larger in size. This is again going to occur in chronic anal fissures and it's going to occur proximal to the fissure. So it's going to occur closer to the core of the body. Think of it like that again. So it's going to be above the anal fissure. So this will be something that can only be observed with a clinical examination, but this is also another finding that can occur with chronic anal fissures. Please check my full lesson on anal fissures if you want more information on how to diagnose and treat them. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.